So our next approach to uh, estimating asset pricing models in expected return beta form, the fama macbeth procedure. Here's the procedure. First, run the time series regression again to find the betas, same as we did for the cross-sectional regression. Now we're going to do something different. We're going to run a cross-sectional regression at each time. Yes, indeed, if you have 700 data points, you're going to run 700 different cross-sectional regressions. The actual return on the beta at e and the beta with getting a different factor risk premium for each time period and a different error for each time period. Then our final estimate of the factor risk premium is going to be the average of the individual factor risk premiums we found in each time period. And the final estimate of the error is going to be our estimate of the average of the errors in each individual time period. Then that's so. That's our estimates. Where do our standard errors come from? The standard error of the factor risk premium is going to be sigma over root t. This is the brilliance of Fama and Macbeth. We exploit the different estimates in each time period to find a standard error formula. That's the IID formula. You know how to use GMM, an S matrix, to compute standard errors that allow for autocorrelation or heteroscedasticity if you feel like it. Same. We need a covariance of the alphas in order to do our alpha test. Well, uh, under IID, that's just the, COVID, the, uh, the, uh, co the covariance of the uh, sample ones divided by T, or again, GMM. Um, uh, GMM allows you to get that distribution as well without assuming IID over time. Once again, uh, the tradition has not been to compute this and not to do the GRS style test but there's no reason not to do it. It's available here as it is available everywhere else. So what is this Fama Macbeth technique about? Uh, why are we doing it? Uh, one thing to notice, if the betas are constant over time, then the Fama Macbeth regression estimates are exactly numerically to 100 data points identical, uh, 100 decimal points identical to the cross-sectional estimates. It's, this is just a way of producing the cross-sectional um, uh, the cross-sectional estimates. Now, why is that the case? Intuitively, because regression is linear. And so the average of regression coefficients is the same as the regression coefficients of averages. That's how linear functions behave. Maybe it'll help to do that schematically. The Fama Macbeth says that each date run a regression, get a lambda at each date, and then average the lambdas. The cross-sectional regression says, first take the average of the returns and then run one cross-sectional regression. If those are linear functions, the order in which you average and regress can't make any difference. That may be clearer than a bunch of algebra, which proves the same thing. The Fama-Macbeth standard errors, uh, the sigma over root t, are exactly the same as the cross-sectional standard errors, except they're missing the Schenken correction uh, for the fact that the betas are, are uh, generated regressors. And therefore, there was an argument about how big is that correction, is that important or not. So viewed this way, Fama and Macbeth is simply is a very simple way to compute the standard errors for cross-sectional regressions that avoid the kinds of formulas that we looked at before for cross-sectional regressions. Think a little more about Fama and Macbeth and why it's so famous and why it's lasted so long. Uh, it's a technique that's quite useful not only for asset pricing, but for pooled regressions in general. So a pooled regression or a, a panel, a pooled regression is one version of a panel regression. A panel regression. It's a regression where you have both an I and a T subscript, and this happens all the time in both uh, finance, corporate finance, uh, and macroeconomics, where you're looking, say, across companies as well as over time. Now, in running a, a panel regression of this sort, the main problem, we know how to run the regression, the problem is what if the error terms are not independent of each other? And the error terms are almost always not independent of each other. If one firm is lucky, the neighboring firm is likely to be lucky as well. So you have to, have to do that. You have to correct for the, the correlation of the error terms. In this situation, just the pooled estimate is consistent, but the usual standard errors are wrong. So Fama Macbeth is a formula that gets you standard errors that correct for that cross-sectional correlation of the error terms. So why Fama Macbeth? Well, in 1970, when Fama and Macbeth were writing, Nobody knew the formula for how do you correct OLS uh, regressions for cross-correlation of the error terms. Either that formula or the now pervasive cluster command just hadn't been invented. 
So Fama Macbeth is, is both an easy and a very clever way to solve that outstanding uh, problem. And interestingly, many papers to this day ignore cross-sectional correlation of the error terms. Uh, Mitch Peterson at, at Kellogg um, added up finance papers and found that 42% of a sample of finance papers simply ignored cross-sectional correlation of the error terms, resulting in t-statistics off by a factor of 10. So it's important to have uh, an easy way to solve that. These days, you, can, you don't need Fama Macbeth. We know how to do it with clustering or, or with good formulas. It, Fama Macbeth remains because it's so easy and intuitive and because everyone's uh, gotten so familiar with how it works. The one danger of the Fama Macbeth procedure is that it ignores variation over time. The only place it gets, it, it, it learns about the regression coefficient is from cross-sectional variation. You can see that from, from how we did things. If all the observations were the same across sectionally, uh, but varied over time, then you couldn't estimate this regression. You just did zero, zero, zero. You, you get nothing each time period, although the times were varying. So uh, if you want to exploit time series variation in the X and how that relates to the Y, you have to do a panel data and then correct your standard errors. Fama Macbeth, a variant of cross-sectional regression. Um.